My name is Sig Harvey. I'm an artist who uses text and image to explore the senses. The metaphor, symbol, light, color, um, form, shape, palette. Um, and so metaphor is part of that where I really sort of think about, well, how else can I say this? And so that's how it works for images, but it also works that way with my written work as well, where I'm trying to somehow come at um, the world in a slightly different way. So this whole process of working intuitively and then, you know, deep thought about why and what does this mean? You know, I really think of photography as this sort of way of, it's almost like a Ouija board, right? Like where you're trying to fix, like it's telling you something and you need to listen. And you need to be a good date when you're listening, you know, like not talk too much and really like absorb with what you're making. Because I think a lot of photographers, we make a lot, but we don't spend much time really analyzing, well, why was I drawn to that area or this person? Or why did I want to get up at dawn and photograph this river? And so I really love that sort of that, that duality of the conscious and the conscious mind coming together. I used to work in black and white in the 90s. Um, I worked in black and white for years and did a, a number of uh, projects in black and white. It was actually my first love was black and white street photography. Um, but in 2003, I made this shift where I really analyzed and thought about my relationship to color. And I realized that color is um, something is something that has shaped my entire life. If I think back on major events in my life, if I think, if I sort of plot or map my life, color has had this huge effect. Um, and it's, just, it's a scientific fact that color affects the body. I mean, that's proven. Um, so more and more I've been exploring this idea as um, color and how it can heal, color in, in the form of beauty, um, and how it can repair, how it can foster conversation. Um, I, feel, I feel really strongly about color. Um, it's something that I'm leaning into more and more and, and, and this idea of, of the psychology of color, um, I think it's a tool that as for photographers that we can use to sort of seduce people. Um, but it's also, it's more than that. I think this, it's a complicated um, and deep relationship that humans have with color. I mean, so much has been studied on the theory of color and how we interact with color. Um, I think there's a precedence to be drawn to color in certain times of trauma and certain times of need in our lives. Like Joseph Albers wrote um, The Interaction of Color uh, in his 70s. That was his last major treaty. Derek Jarman wrote about color when he was dying of AIDS. I think there's a need, a be I think it's linked very closely to beauty, beauty and color and this sort of intersection. And I think we need um, beauty and nature and color when as a salve almost. You know, I think I do that. I think I you bring the viewer into my subconscious by exploring these ideas of metaphor. I mean, photographs are of something, right? That's, you know, it's subject matter. But working with symbol and metaphor, it then you can then start to sort of transform that. Um, I mean, my, in my newest book, latest book, uh, Blue Violet, the images are of flowers, but they're not about flowers. They're about living and dying, right? And the senses. So I'll use whatever I can. You know, I go across genre, still life, portraiture, landscape, you know, using any type of subject matter as a way to sort of get into your subconscious, as a way to sort of tell stories, um, as a way to make a mark on the world. I definitely seek out what I consider to be magical in the everyday. Um, my work is not based in fantasy. It absolutely is rooted, like full, you know, feet on the ground, rooted in reality. Um, and that to me, I consider my job. Like every day I get up and I think, okay, I have to go out there in the world and find something that gives me pause or makes me gasp. Something that says, it's almost like the stamp, the stake in the ground that I've lived and I've seen this. So while I love a lot of work that is 
um, Photoshop based. That's not my, that's not for me. For me, I really, I want to have seen it. So these cameras, again, this idea of witness, of journal taking, of being out there in the world. You know, photography makes me get up at like, at dawn otherwise I'm too lazy right there's no way I would get up without that camera there to say I saw this and I think of it as a, almost a way of life you know that we're all here trying to make a mark on the world and what do we leave behind what are our legacies and I really feel that my role is to do that is to find these things that remind us that the world is not beyond repair and that is beautiful And so that's my work. Like some days it feels impossible and other days I feel like I, I got there, like I just, I touched it, you know. 75% um, of all information that comes to our brain comes from the eyes, but comes from the eyes. But what about the other 25%? So it's that idea of how, how can I get to you more as the viewer? How can I get to myself as the image maker? So I'm always searching for different ideas of how to incorporate the other senses. Um, you know, how can I make a photograph about touch? It's complicated, you know, I don't quite know, but you know, but I feel like that's my work every day is to nudge closer towards that. We think of, we make assumptions about the senses. We think of flavor being only about, um, we think of uh, flavor being only about taste, but it's made up of the whole, all of the five senses. It's not just taste. So I love thinking about those sort of difficult in between pieces of how I can touch people more. I don't know. The answer is we, we don't know what we get or don't get because of someone's assumptions about, you know, something as simple or as basic as a name. So I, that part I don't know, but I do often get emails um, addressed to Dear Mr. Harvey and I know I like it. <laughs> I like that idea that, you know, that you're challenging what so, you know, that the people have these presumptions and um, I, and, and that's interesting to me. Uh, so I think it probably has, but who's to say, who's to know? Not me, you know? I don't believe in the idea of the female, of a female gaze. I feel like we all come to our work from our own perspective. Um, I almost feel like it's too easy to sort of um, uh, categorize, you know, male, female, what about non-binary people? This idea that um, perhaps for many years we've been hearing maybe from only one area of society. Um, and so I'm really welcoming this, this period of reckoning where we, we are realizing that through artwork, we can learn so much more from each other's and hearing from more voices. So that's what I want to foster, hearing from more voices, more, more experiences um, from the, I believe in the individual gaze. Definitely Sally Mann. Um, I mean, even as a kid, I loved her work. Um, and she blazed a trail, I think, for so many women and, um, and photographers who wanted to, sell, to tell the story from within a home. You know, I think um, her work was, you know, revolutionary in that way. Um, she's also brilliant and smart and articulate um, and, you know, just a wonderful, wonderful human. Also, um, uh, Andrea Modica, I, I really have utmost uh, reverence and respect for her work. Debbie Fleming Caffrey, she's extraordinary. Um, such a, you know, a pulse and a heartbeat to her work that I, um, you know, it's very different than my own, but I'm really drawn to. Um, all of these women have um, inspired me.